Most people in America are quite familiar with what is an insult and what is not an insult, and when they should acquiesce just to be polite. You see, there are many types of women in this world. There's white women, there's black women, there's women of different colors and different nationalities, red skins and whatnot. But it's not about what a man sees when he sees a woman. What he sees is the soul. A man of the Lord always sees a woman's soul. And if the Lord says to the man, you must receive what is being given, you receive it. The problem is that there are people who like to play in the whisper modes of life. And the whisper modes insist on someone doing something when they really don't want to do it. You see, a whisper mode is something that new technologists are utilizing in social engineering. Social engineering is a construct that we learned about maybe 10, 15 possibly years ago in which people were studying the way people use social media and creating sentences and advertising to entice and enlist people to take an action. And it's, well, sort of a credible sales process. I mean, let's face it, we would still be walking around in burlap and living in caves if we didn't have salespeople. So there's no shame in a salesperson. What there is a shame in is, in is people trying to set others up to abuse them or harm them. That is an abomination to the Lord. Many times I get played with by people that want to give me simply a dollar, and while I appreciate that dollar, I have to question what is the purpose of that dollar. Now, someone might say, get yourself something to drink. Okay, let's talk about the validity of that. How many places can you spend only a single dollar and buy something to drink? Only a handful of places. Now, can you do other things with the dollar? Absolutely. You can buy a full meal for a dollar at a Dollar Tree or a Dollar General. Those are good quality places to do that. You can also do that at a Walmart because they often have prices that are less than that. I buy marvelous water at a ruler store because it's great, clean water. Now, the problem is sometimes I don't have the energy to make it across that way. Now, it's maybe six to eight block journey, but it's still across major intersections. It still runs past my geese that like to follow me all over the place, and I don't like to hold up traffic with their behavior. I'm the first one to scold them to get them out of the streets, and the first one to move them if they don't move themselves quick enough with their little feet, little web feet, on a hot pavement, which has got to be mighty difficult, unless they really don't have a lot of uh, kind of uh, veins down there to feel that. But that's not my point. My point is that if you're going to give someone a dollar, don't make it like it's a big amount of money. And don't, by God means, tell them what they should do with it. Although it is a thoughtful kindness to give a suggestion of what they can do with it, don't make it like they're going to get in trouble if they don't do it immediately. What I know is about what my body needs and what it doesn't need. I bet you're the same. I bet you know exactly precisely what your body needs and doesn't need. You see, a dollar that I have now in my pocket, despite not having any possible pocket change, other than maybe two cents, can allow me to buy five portions of ramen. You see, we have to be clear about what a dollar can accomplish. At a good quality store, a dollar can accomplish a lot of things. At a bad quality store, a dollar can accomplish a small amount of things. But when the dollar is given with ill intent, God is not pleased. And I guess that's the point of my cast today. If you're going to help someone who's impoverished or someone who's homeless, just provide the cash. And when it's more, someone might be sort of flabbergasted, or they might feel an obligation to give you something in exchange out of a value for what you're providing them. And in that, the transaction is over with. Paying a dollar does not allow you to cut anyone's face. Paying a dollar doesn't allow you to provide someone a disgrace. Paying a dollar does not give you one bit of empathy other than you've produced yourself, perhaps in front of your Catholic background, your Baptist background, as a person possibly on the Good Samaritan path. A Good Samaritan is supposed to be just that, who gives unselfishly, who gives without intent, and who gives in a way that is helpful to the person who needs to do what's called spending. Now, if I say the wrong words, if I don't rhyme all the time, that's really up to me. That is also up to the Lord and how He asks me to communicate to you who might be listening. You see, those who might be listening are one type of people. Those who might listen in three months' time are a different type of person. What I have found is that someone has ill-willed themselves into my opportunities, destroyed my intellectual property, ruined my copywritten work, and openly they think that they're getting away with it somehow, but you aren't ever getting away with that type of abuse in front of the war. And that's the hardest part for most people to face, that they played in a game, that they did all these things, that they decided to show up, but then they didn't follow through on what God asked them to do. They stole cash, they stole money, but they made it look like 
they did something more than they did, and that is an abomination to God. If you're just going to give somebody a dollar, don't make a big fuss about it. Just give it to them and be on with it. Say, please take this in remembrance of me is an okay way to go because isn't that what Jesus said when he did the whole water into wine stuff? That's not what I'm saying. Is When you take communion in a church, isn't he saying, do this in remembrance of me? Now, I am not Christian, but I know that story because I've listened to it. I've done it my whole life, both in Christian houses and in Methodist houses and in Lutheran houses. We've had communion. But when you're trying to make communion with another human being, usually you break bread. Normally you go for a meal. Otherwise, you go and you spend a little snuggle time, presuming that they're of that type of intimate relationship to you. And if you think they're not, you better think back through the conversations you've had, the topics that you've covered, and openly you might not realize how close you were getting until someone who was ill-willed interfered. Now, as I look through my bags this morning, I find that there's something missing. A beautiful stone that I was gifted by a person who was a Wiccan gave me a gorgeous amethyst stone. It's now missing. I'm also seeing that my bags have been ripped or cut again and again, and I question, who is this monster who keeps following me and doing these things? That was happening. I stayed away from here. I had 18 bags cut by someone last year. Who is that ill-willed person who thinks they have the right to vandalize my property? I'd really like to know. Now, in life and in opportunities, we have the right to speak the truth about what's happening to us. But what's happening to us may not be seemingly appearing to people like you, but what's happening to me might not have anything to do with you. What's happening to you may not have anything to do with me, but I can practice the concept of empathy. And empathy says, I trust you, I believe you, until there's some other reason not to do so. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and when we falsely accuse people of things they didn't do, we ruin relationships. And openly, it's an immature behavior. You have to be willing to talk to people, you have to be willing to work things out, because that's what the Lord in heaven expects, no matter what your faith is, no matter what your practice, and no matter what your version of the Bible is. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth of God, and if you haven't learned how to be generous and kind to other people who are in struggle, then how will anyone ever be generous and kind to you when it's your turn? You see, God can teach lessons, and that's true. I had a child who went to, and decided to be something I wasn't pleased with, but at some point, he grew up. He grew up by the loving village that we placed him within, and he did something right in the end. In America, we have life, and we have liberty, and we have freedom. But our life and our liberty and freedom does not allow us to harm someone, it does not allow us to steal from someone, and it does not allow a mature adult, fully functioning, fully trying to perform in society to the best of their prosperity, to do such a thing. In life, we have to recognize where people begin and end in our life. And if it's a total stranger, you have no rights to them at all. If they're a person who's a social friend or social business acquaintance, you might have some rights based on the relationship, but when it's a true, dear friend of yours, you have a lot more rights than you might think about. But here's the deal. You still have to be everything based on permission. And when we do things based on permission, we're never harming anyone. Because we're always asking for permission, we're always acquiescing to what we can and can't handle. And if it's something we can't handle, we say, how about something else? And we keep working it until we find something that which we can help with. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about the house of God. And the house of God says we do not play with people's lives. We do not interfere with the Lord's plan. And we do not presume to know what the Lord has at hand for any other human being. Because when we do that, we destroy the gifts that the Lord gives us. And the benefits that are supposed to be ours. And openly we destroy God's hour and his work in the world.